In this video, I'm going to go over how to perform a complex product between two numbers, how to multiply them together, and then how to plot that on a graph and what it means in terms of transformations. So you'll see what I've got up here right now is just two very basic formulas that you really need to know. How to find the modulus, it looks like the absolute value of z right here, okay? And the other one is how to find the argument, the angle of z. So um, I'll get to the obvious shortcut and then I'll, then I'll walk through how to do it. Um, you can just read this graph, right? You can see that z is in purple and it has an angle right here, which you recognize from the unit circle as being, uh, let's see, five pi over six. And it has a radius, which you can just look at the graph and see right there, it's at r equals three. So you can put those numbers in here and that'll work out just fine. Five pi over six. But I do want to spend about one minute talking about how you would find these things if it weren't plotted for you, because sometimes it will not be. So the way I would do this is I would say, okay, um, magnitude of w. Well, that's the square root of the real part, which is square root of 2 squared, plus the imaginary part, also squared. Now, this turns into the square root of 2 plus 2, which turns into the square root of 4, which equals 2. And there we go. We're done. That's the magnitude of w. The way I would find the, um, the argument of it is to take the inverse tangent. So what is the inverse tangent of the imaginary part, which is radical 2, over the real part, which is also radical 2. So in other words, what's the imaginary tangent, or what's the, what's the inverse tangent of 1? Well, you should know your tangent values. Uh, there's two places where tangent equals 1. One of them is right here at 45 degrees, or pi over 4. The other one is down here in quadrant 3 at 135 degrees, no, 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 no. That one's uh, 225 degrees, or 5 pi over 4. Okay, and the question is, well, how do I know which one it is? Again, pretend you can't look at the graph. How do you know which one it is? If you take a look at W, see those X and Y coordinates in rectangular form are both positive? That points to quadrant 1. So it tells me I am not in quadrant 3 with that 5 pi over 4. This is going to be pi over 4. Okay. So that's the preliminary stuff, how you find these angles and moduli. And the next part is actually quite easy. And I've written out de Moivre's theorem right here. Uh, so you can see pretty easily how these, how these come together. The absolute value, the, mag, the, the modulus of eta is just equal to the other two moduli times each other. So that becomes 2 times 3, that's 6. The argument of eta is just the other two angles added together. Right? When you're doing when you're doing a product, it's kind of like exponents. You add those angles together. So this becomes uh, well, pi over four plus five pi over six. Now, this is going to involve a change of denominators, right? We we don't have common denominators, we need them. And once you get through that, you'll find this is 13 pi divided by 12. Okay. So putting those together into polar form is very easy once you have eta and theta. You just say, uh, there's my 6, right? That's the magnitude, times the cosine of 13 pi over 12, plus i times the sine of 13 pi over 12. Okay, so that's what we go here. And we're done with just about everything. There's a little bit more to go. I want to do several things here. Let's mark these in red. I want to mark the point for eta. Okay, so where is that going to be? Let's think about what this is again. Remember, it has a magnitude of 6, a, a radius of 6. So it's going to be somewhere on this big circle on the outside here. And it has an angle of 13 pi over 12. Well, you may not know where 13 pi over 12 is, but it's just a little past 12 pi over 12, right? And that's pi. So it's just a little past that. So we're talking about right here. This is the angle. It's kind of in between those special angles. It's not a great one. Uh, but there's the radius of 6. So that's how you would plot it on the graph. And as you scroll down here, you'll see, I want you to describe this in terms of transformations. What transformations are happening on Z? And I'm going to just redo the color on this. 
Um, I want my product to be in blue, Z to be in purple, and W to be in red, according to the way it's set up in this problem. So what's happening to Z, the purple curve? Well, first thing that happens is it is lengthened. I don't know, you could quibble over whether this is really the first thing or not, but we know that it must be extended in length by a factor of 2, okay? That factor of 2 is simply the length of w over here. We multiply z by w's length, first things first. So that is a scaling factor of 2. The next thing that also has to happen is it has to get rotated by w's angle. See these two rotation arrows that I'm drawing here? Those are exactly the same. So that 45 degrees of w is also how much this gets rotated to meet the blue curve. So this is going to be rotated uh, counterclockwise by pi over 4. These two operations, a scaling factor and a rotation, are basically how you describe multiplication by a complex number in the coordinate plane.